All right. Hey, everybody. Tom Miller here. And I'm really excited today as we have another special guest on our podcast. And um, he's, a, uh, he's, a, he's a former supervisor of mine. Uh, he's a friend of mine, uh, most importantly. He's a mentor to me and to so many adults and uh, you know, children that are now you know, grown to adults. Um, and his name's Bud Dingwall. And Bud is a uh, two-time national blue ribbon, blue ribbon school principal, right? And we'll talk more about that. Like, how did you do that? But I wanted to share uh, just, just really like how I know Bud. And you know, I met Bud when I was a teacher in Wilmington, North Carolina. And um, I think, Bud, this was probably about um, maybe 2004 or five. And this was when um, when the whole standard six started to come around, right? The whole kind of like evaluation of, you know, teachers and, 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 and their growth and all those pieces. And I, and I remember, I think it was at like the uh, uh, McCrell, maybe like, you know, conference, the like MC Aria, and it was in, in Wilmington, I think at, you know, UNC Wilmington or something like that. And, uh, yeah. oh, they, they were up there. And, and I think it was Marzano. I think, I feel like it was Marzano, you know, someone was in the room and they were talking about it and there was an opportunity for a, you know, just for like a Q and A, right? And it was kind of, you know, stifling. I thought, and you stand up and you ask a question to the point of something like, um, "When are we going to start caring about teachers?" And like the whole room was just silent. And I'm like looking. I'm like, "Who is that guy? Who just asked that?" You know. And I was probably my third or fourth year as a teacher. I was at another elementary school. I was teaching special education over there, and and. Um, Maybe within the next year, I think we met, you know, personally, and then I, I came over to your school um, and 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 taught. You know, you, you had a teacher yeah, who had a little bit of a like extended leave, and I came and I and I taught, and and I've just always heard about this um, this legendary Bud Dingwall, right? Yeah. And and but I never had a chance to uh, really talk to you, and 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 I felt it was so amazing to be in your school uh, that was Coddington Elementary, and. Yeah, so. um, I've just never been around someone who always made me feel important, right? Someone from a supervisory position. It didn't matter like what we were talking about or where it was. You always, uh, he just makes you feel like you're the most important person in the room. And that's that's how my relationship started with Bud. So you're talking, you know, 16, 17 years ago, probably, but it, but it, but it all started from Bud standing up in a room of probably 4,000 people and asking these big wigs who were probably getting paid tens of thousands of dollars to come and speak, you know, speak to us, right? Not speak into us, you know, speak to us and said, yeah, I, I got a question. When are we going to start valuing and caring about teachers? So, uh, and then, you know, since then, Bud, Bud has worked with our team, uh, you know, for years as a as a consultant. Now he's got his own, you know, consulting, um, you know, company as well. And he's, he's a principal mentor. He's a grandfather. He's a dad. He's so many things. And he's my son's, my son's favorite, favorite uncle. So he always said, when are we going to see Uncle Dingwall again? So Bud, thanks so much for being, uh, you know, a guest with us. And thanks, thanks for being part of my life and uh, in the lives of, you know, so many. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your history of how you got into education like how did you how did you get to this point here uh, well this is thank you thank you so much tom first for inviting me to be part of your show and i just have enjoyed your friendship and all the wonderful things you're doing for schools so including me uh, allows me to still stay active and make connections with educators because that's what it's all about uh, when I started out to become a teacher back in 1963, I uh, went on and got my degree and started teaching in 1968. But it just seemed so natural. Uh, I was a reading and a physical education teacher uh, at Talmadge City Schools in Ohio. And this, this uh, opportunity I, I learned very quickly that in order to be a effective teacher and communicator, you gotta make a connection that's real and sincere with the people that you are talking with or, or that you're working with. So um, I went on and went to graduate school. I lived in Kent, Ohio, Kent State, 
and started my master's degree in 1970. Well, if you recall, 1970 was the year the four students got shot. And I was in graduate school there and went through that terrible tragedy uh, as a resident of Kent, as a graduate student, and learning more about the compassion that is needed when you're working with people and when you're in a public or a charter school or a private school, you have to be out there as a person who cares about children, that connects with parents by being available. The big thing that so many things happen to, to schools when the principal's not present or is unreliable, says they're gonna do something and doesn't do it, uh, makes criticism to people uh, that are unwarranted and maybe embarrassing. Uh, if it's okay, Tom, I'd like to share some of my uh, 10 principles for yeah. principles. Absolutely. I want you to do that. And I, you know, I want to make sure everybody heard, you know, Bud, Bud was at Kent State, you know, when, um, if you know the song Four Dead in Ohio, I mean, that's, you know, you know, written by Neil Young and, and Crosby, Stills and Nash, which actually we lost, you know, David Crosby yes, you know, passed away Saturday last night. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. um, and, and I think it's so important, you know, uh, we, you know, we are um, uh, studying John Maxwell's 21 Irre Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And I know you've read that book and, and you, you know, you're a John Maxwell fan, but his law number 10 is the law of connection. And that is you, you know, prior to reaching for the hand, you have to reach for the heart. And just kind of hearing you, you know, describe just, you know, starting out as a teacher and kind of knowing and understanding that like, that's just always been your thing. Right. So when, you know, it's, it's not natural for everybody, but it, but it was natural for you. And I do think that this is a place where leaders need to be very conscious that, um, you know, you know, people won't go along with you unless they get along. Right. And so, but, you know, we're like always, oh, well, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Or the, you know, you can never be too busy to try to connect with somebody. Right? Well, when, you, yeah. when you're a principal, especially, you can get so bogged down so quick and, and become invisible uh, in the school. I made it an absolute priority that for the first hour or two hours of the day and the last hour or two hours of the day, I was out in the building reading, opening car doors, talking to parents, letting them know that your child is safe. Your child is safe. And I've got a, a note that I received after the Sandy Hook mm. tragedy that I can share that gives you an idea what, how important it is to be seen and known about. Dear Mr. Yeah. Dingle, I just wanted to thank you for all that you do to make a safe, nurturing environment at Coddington where our children can grow and learn. You are such a key part of the exemplary staff at our school, a staff that makes our kids' needs a priority over their own and all the ordinary days in the school year. I recognize that the work you do is very important and value your contributions to my children's formative years. In light of recent sad events, I have been reminded of who are the heroes in my life. Thank you for being one of them. Oh man, was that, was that from a, a, a student or, or a parent? It was parent? from a parent. That was from a parent who had children in Coddington. Yeah. That's that was beautiful. Right Sandy Hook. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, go ahead. Yeah, you said you wanted to share. You know, one of the reasons that you know, you know, yeah, we're having Bud on is he wants to talk about his his ten principles for principles, right? The P L E and the P A L S, and and this is something that I know Bud, you know, carries around in his. So if you ever run into Bud, ask yeah. him because he has it. It's in his pocket. He's got these, you know, principles written down um, on a on a card here, uh, and 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 he'll be able to share one. But yeah, go ahead. Why don't you, you, you know, you know, why don't you start, you know, talking about these and, you know, but if you can, while you share them, can you kind of, you know, you know, maybe talk about um, either a story or a moment right, yeah. where this 
came into play, yeah. you know, you know, so so we can get some more context around it. Go ahead. Well, um, number nine, uh, build relationships by listening and think of your school as a sanctuary for all. That to me is when you have parents coming in, you have your teachers coming in and so forth. Some of them are having coping with illness. Some of them are coping with divorce. Some Everybody's in a family situation has challenges going on all the time. What I always told my staff, we do not have time to be bickering and being unkind to each other. We're here to support each other. And, and as we go through this, I'll share some letters and things that demonstrate how these people feel about the school and the people that are in them and how uh, the message that the building relationships by listening and caring is out there. So I'm gonna go way back to 1989. Dear Mr. Dingwall, thank you for helping me to grow the past four years. Through your guidance and example, I feel I have matured and have a new purpose to my life. I will always remember my years at Hillcrest as some of the best years of my family's life. You have touched us all I wish you the very best. You have created a lasting institution at Hillcrest, which will hopefully continue long after we are both gone. Finally, Linda Bear. Now the thing about Linda Bear is she wasn't a teacher there, she was my PTA president. And I saw in her that she would, she had what it took to be, she was a natural teacher. And I encouraged her. So she went back to school, got her teaching degree, started teaching. Fast forward, I read, she was named as a Millikan Scholar, where the Millikan Foundation gives uh, honor to teachers, gave her $25,000 too. That's how prestigious this is. And here it was, it was me encouraging her, letting her have leadership as a PTA president but it, it, this is what I, this is why I spent over 50 years in education just to get 50 that. years. Yeah. And I know, you know, one of the things you did, you know, with this uh, principle about, you know, building uh, uh, relationships, I remember you telling me when I was a younger principal um, that you, you know, you had an established set lunch date kind of with every staff member, you know, was it once a quarter or twice a year or whatever it was, but that lunch date, you know, was really about, let me get to know you. How are you? Where do you see yourself down the road? How can I help you get there? Right. I mean, is that yeah. something you just started to do or did you have a mentor kind of share that with you or. Uh, I, I, I probably, I, I don't know. I just thought it was the right thing to do. Uh, and I made it very clear, this was your meeting. I'm not here to, I'm here to listen. Connect by listening, that's one of my principles. Yeah. And, build and so by listening. Build relationships by listening. What a, what a powerful, powerful quality and skill listening is. And I hear the people, they're like, oh, I got 100 staff. I can't have 100 lunches every quarter. Well, here's the thing, but you and I know this how much time do difficult people sometimes take from your life, right? And yeah. if you can build a, a, a relationship with all of your staff, the difficult ones, you've already you know, trimmed some of that time down, right? So taking the time on the front end helps you repair, right? You know, you know, preparing on the front helps you repair on the back end. You don't have to spend so much time sometimes because you've got rapport, right? What a, what a, what a really, really important you know, strategy. I mean, that is a leadership strategy right down everybody right now build relationships and that's one way you can do it is just to have you know lunches right or just yes stop. and like Bud said yeah this is your time not not at my time i'm here to listen go ahead and be and be in the classroom and say you know so the teachers when i first started going in classroom maybe i was a new principal a new building you know they would they would say what's what are you doing here you know? <laughs> and, yeah. and uh, i'm 
let them know I'm coming in to you know see the greet, greet the children. I always find something positive to say. I, I know there's walkthroughs and all these evaluative tools, but to me the most important thing was that I took the time to get in a classroom, make some positive com comments about how hard they're working or what they're doing, and talk to the children. Um, I always made it a point to talk to teachers too in such a way that I would say, you know, I want to thank you, let's say this at a staff meeting, for I appreciate you telling me your true opinion, that I welcome you, that, I, that you care about me enough that you're going to tell me what's on your mind and knowing that I will listen and I won't overreact. So I would get people come in and they would vent or whatever. But see, it, what happens so often now is I had gone in to see a teacher yesterday working in Harris Teeter. She was one of the best kindergarten teachers there that I've ever worked with at Connington. She retired early. She was fed up. Wow. And she was under some attack with social media and she said no one not my principal not anyone from central office not ncae no one came to her defense mm. and for and, our folks around the world harris teeter is a food store so you know folks are uh, like what what's a harris so, teeter yeah so they went so they went yeah. to teach and retired early because they didn't feel valued and uh, supported right I mean, exactly. the people don't quit organizations. People quit people, bud. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's 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 yeah. really what it comes down to. And and just seeing, you know, I saw her yesterday for the first time, and you know, just uh, she was just a, she is such a wonderful person, and but she had to protect herself and and leave oh. uh, something that she was a, a truly gifted teacher. Mm. So, so that. Yeah. Yep. What's another principle? I think you you started to talk about one is 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 that listening one of the principles too. Yes, it is build relationships by listening. Build relationships by listening. All right, I love it. What's the next one? And become a servant leader. Ah, what does that mean? Uh, that <laughs> as uh, you're there not to control and boss other people or manage things. You're there to find out what teachers and staff need and help them to get it for the most part. You know, uh, I tried to, I, I said to my staff, I, I'm a yes man. You come to me and talk to me and if I can figure this out, we'll get this, we'll get this for you. And an example of that is uh, when smart boards or whiteboards first came out, it's been a long time ago already. Well, our school, we had none, and no one was stepping up to give us the money at that time. My PTA and my teachers, we decided we wanted those smart boards, and they raised enough to get a smart board for everybody. I, I can't remember exactly, twenty-five to $50,000. It was phenomenal. But that idea that if you believe in something and you need something, I'm going to figure out a way to help you get it. And uh, we did that. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, they get the servant, you know, you know, leader part. They're like, you know, oh, well, I'm not anybody's, you know, servant, right? Or I'm, or I'm you know, I, you know, and, and I just, you know, I think about, the many roles you and I had, uh, you know, together, right? We, you and I have walked into some really difficult situations as a team, yes. um, you know, especially, you know, we had that school that closed a few years ago and we had to tell them, right? We had to be the ones to let them know that the school would no longer be there. And, um, you know, I chose you, bud, to, you know, partner with me on that project because, there was no one else in the world that I could think about who could go into that school, build rapport really quickly with people and make them feel comfortable, right? And even after we had to let them know that they no longer had a job, right? They wouldn't stop coming to work, 
right? We they they just kept serving and serving, and we're like, no, we're trying to serve you. Like, let's get your resume together. Let's help you find. And I was like, but that's that's the connection I think that you instantly um, just have with people. And I think that's that. And you know, again, it it doesn't come naturally to everybody, but you can learn how to do it. And I think one of the best ways in learning how to lead better is by watching really effective leaders, you know? And uh, that's what I always learn, you know, by you, you just, you're, you're always leaning in. And I just, and I just love that. And you're always seeing, how can I help? You know, how could I, how could I help you with, you know, whatever you're, you know, trying to achieve? It's, it's really about getting off your own agenda. Well, thank, thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. That's very humbling. Mm -hmm. two, two of the uh, two words that I, I like to live by is, respect and kindness. And in the schools where I was principal, I always had a sign up, what greater with wisdom than kindness? And uh, that that has a big part of having a school that's successful and caring and people look forward to come, coming there and being a part of it. So, now, yeah. Now, what I would love, you know, I had shared this a little bit earlier, and I want to make sure we don't miss this, you know. So, Bud, you were national blue ribbon principal, right? So can you talk about what that means, right? How do you achieve that? And it was at two different schools in two different states, mind you, everybody. Uh, it was in, they were both in Ohio. Oh, they were I, both in Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, the Blue Ribbon School program, when it first came out from the U.S. Department of Education, required you to, to do an extremely a long self-assessment in an application for consideration. Then it was sent to Washington, D.C., where it was reviewed. Uh, if it was satisfactory, then they would take two educators and make two days of an evaluation of a school to see what, if they, what they wrote about their school was really true. And if they met that criteria, then they became recognized as a National Blue Ribbon School, which was uh, the reason, one of the reasons I did it is, again, it builds teachers, you know, so often are not appreciated. And when you lift, lift a school with that kind of an award and you do the work because the team came together, we were working in pairs and teams at night, weekends to get this application done and right, where we really were clear about how to do that. Uh, so that's how that process worked. And after that, then you get invited to Washington, D.C. and the White House to be recognized. And the last time I uh, got that award, it was President Clinton was still the president. And we had a beautiful October day where we were in the White House Rose Garden with the Marine Band playing and the uh, Secretary of Education was our speaker. And we thought we wouldn't get to see anybody else because there was somebody important from out of town. We didn't believe that President Clinton would you know, even be able to be there or even the vice president. Well, it turned out President Clinton showed up, came and shook hands, talked with us for the longest time. So that was a real, a real highlight of recognition that carried over because I brought my PTA president, brought one of my key teachers to the award ceremony. Uh, that, those, those are some real highlights that mm -hmm. made a difference. And the second school was, uh, the first school was uh, Hillcrest School. And the second school was Pepper Pike School, which is a school that I reopened. Uh, and then five years later, we became a national blue ribbon school. Yeah. So, and I think when you when you go through exercises like that, and I, you know, this is why I wanted you to share it. You know, yes. even if you don't get the blue ribbon, right? Even if you don't, the 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 deep internal review 
is so important, right? You get to see your uh, people shine. You get to really, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, pour into people and equip them and, and talk about what an effective school looks like and should exactly. be doing. I yeah. mean, there's so many really critical uh, 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 learning moments when you're, because it's all about reflection, right? You know, when you're going through that uh, process and a leader's well, job. It, it, it sure is, you know, it's the, the reflection, it's the research, it's the writing, it's the rewriting. Uh, yeah. Those those applications were a real uh, educational high level of sophistication yeah. had to meet in order to be considered. Yeah. So and a, and a leader's job, right? Two things, but is to one, always determine the current reality. Where are we? And number right. two, communicate where we're going, <laughs> yeah. right? And say, hey, this is yeah. our goal, right? So maybe, you know, maybe you have something, whether it's, you know, Blue Ribbon or Advanced Ed Accreditation, or uh, maybe you want to be the model school in your uh, community. Like, this is a way to do it, you know? We've got our 10 indicators of high uh, performance, or there's other, you know, you know, assessments you can use out there to start to really paint the picture of the future. So so we've already talked about two of Bud's uh, principles. One is building relationships through listening. All right. And then and then the second was being a servant leader. What uh, what's another principle you want to share with us, Bob? Well, I think I, I have a note here I want to share because uh, when you think of your school as a sanctuary for all, uh, and it, it goes along with developing an abundance mentality for yourself and your school. When you have an abundance men mentality, you believe that your school has what it needs and is going to get what it needs. You know, if you have the other opposite thought that you're, you don't have enough of this, you don't have enough of that, you do not move forward. But when you have an abundance mentality, like what we felt we had, an, it was that the, what you need is out there. We just haven't turned it around and put it on our on our turf so that's what we do yeah but uh, and just yeah and that you know you and i i was going to say we just had our anniversary of the first time we got to go visit seaside neighborhood school uh, yeah. and you know talk about a community of abundance i mean yeah. here's a school that raises you know close to a million dollars in one day you know through a, a half marathon and it's a very, you know, it's a community that's very, you know, rich in, you know, um, you know, tourism and, and it's just, you know, beautiful, but they don't, they don't understand the word, uh, you know, like a fixed mindset. They have a constant growth mindset and, a, you know, an abundance mindset. And I think sometimes in education, we suffer from uh, uh, kind of a poverty mindset, right? It's, you know, it's like, well, right. what, you know, what, can we do? I mean, this, and, you know, is it, well, it's the way it's always been. It's like, no, 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 no. You've got to, you've got to manifest it into exactly. your life, right? You got to put it out there and say, this is what we want smart boards for our you know, teachers. I don't know how we're going to get the money for it, but all of a sudden, then these resources start to come to you, right? I mean, That's, it's the law exactly. of attraction. You throw it out there in the universe, it's going to come. Go ahead, but talk, yeah. talk more about that, bud. Well, I want to read this, uh, note that I got, this was from a teacher at, at Coddington. Dear Bud, thank you so very, very much for your extreme underlying generosity and the overflowing compassion that you have shown me during this trying time. I wish everyone could work for someone as wonderful and caring as you are. There are not much words in the world to convey my appreciation and thanks for the love and support you and Lauren have shown me. If this turns out to be my last hurrah, I can thank God that my time at Covington was spent with angels like you. I'm so blessed to know you. Thank you again, DJ. About two weeks later, she died. Oh my goodness. So, but this is family. This is where you can come together. You can be loved. 
and she she really took I was really broke my heart and mm. appreciate I mean, it. when you think about that you know there's 168 hours in a week and most of us educators we really like to work and we like to tell people how much we work too right oh, yeah. and uh you know, some of us, you know, put in 50 hours, some of us put in, gosh, you know, 60, 70. And I, and I think about that, you, you tend to spend more time with your work family than that you do with your personal family. Right. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, those folks out there trying to create, you know, balance in their life, everybody right now, you know, stand on one foot for the rest of this call. And you just see how easy it is to try to maintain balance, right? It's not balance you seek, it's harmony. And what, I just heard Bud share that, you know, note, and it made me really think about Bud was able to create harmony in his school, harmony with his people, harmony with his relationships. And it wasn't a give and take, you know, when you're looking for balance, it's like, it's equal, but to be a, you know, an effective servant leader, it's never about equal. It's always about how much can I give, right? Exactly. And how much can I create through yeah. the talents of other people? Yeah. Well, this uh, thing, things that, that happen too is as a servant leader, I would show the, try to show the way. Uh, for example, I adopted Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People as the character uh, education theme for Covington. And uh, I invited our staff to do a book study and I had, I had other staff development. But those who took part in the book study, I then took them out to dinner and we discussed it. But it, it just lifted uh, the whole atmosphere of the school. And they, you hear kids out on the playground, now let's think about this and make it a win-win situation. Or, uh, Let's be proactive. And so the language and the uh, school of being a servant leader begins to spread when you put that kind of uh, framework in, into the environment. Yeah. So I, I know John Maxwell is, is very strong with Stephen Covey and, mm -hmm. you know, so it, yeah. it's, it works. It really works. It, yeah, it does. And, and uh, you know, whether you're Maxwell's 21 Laws or Covey's, you know, Seven Habits, right? They're frameworks. Yes. They're, and they and everybody, everybody right. has a framework of success. And it's really important that you identify your framework. You, you know, you can follow someone's framework. That's perfectly fine. I was just actually listening to a, a podcast about Napoleon Hill, and he has this 16 step, you know, ladder to uh, success. He wrote it in 1912 and they were talking about it. It's like, it's still, it's still relevant today. And um, everybody has a framework, right? So, so, but it's, you know, so it sounds like, you know, a big part of your framework is, you know, people building relationships with people, learning how I could help other people. Um, right. And, and so, you know, what, you know, what are some of the other really important um, you, you know, you know, steps in your leadership, right? As you were, you know, putting in your 50 years and your time, like, you know, what's, you know, what's, what's either a habit that you pulled from Stephen Covey or, or something that you, you, you know, like created in your own with these principles? Well, I really, really, when you start thinking, well, what's this going to look like when we're finished? When you start with the end in mind, uh, and then you work backward. That is so powerful. If you learn that one habit and you do that, when you're having a discussion, and I know with educators, you can get into a meeting and you will talk about the problem, talk about this, talk about that, but you don't get to the point where, what are we going to do about it? <laughs> right. Yeah. So or, when you start with the end in mind. Yeah. What's our aim? Yeah. What are we trying to actually achieve here? We're yeah, finished good. here. Yeah. We're yeah. going to have a plan that's going to be outlined the steps we're going to be taking and the resources we need and the people that are going to do it to make this change that we need to make. Yeah. So yeah. then we go back to the first step and, and uh, or if you aren't careful about structuring the meeting, 
around exercising your uh, what, what you know around your priorities and plan like that. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to spin your wheels. Yeah. Because I want, people yeah. will have complained. <laughs> You've been there, right? That's right. But you know, you know, we only got a couple minutes left here, and I want to make sure that we tell people how how to get these principles, you know, from you, right? So, so um, let's let's make sure that that we share that here in a second. But you know, I remember um, it was in 2014. It was when I just started my business, and uh, we were we were reading John Maxwell's book, and you stayed on. You know, we were running a mastermind. And you and you weren't, you know, part of our team. You were just, you know, participating because you just wanted to learn and, you know, be part of the community. And I remember something you said to me, and I want to make sure everybody catches this. Uh, you know, you asked me something, and I said, "Oh, we got all this. We got this and that." He says, "You, you know, you sound really busy." I said, "Yeah." And you said, "You know, your to-do list will never, ever, ever be blank, right? Your email box." will never be empty, you know, but at any point you could be off this earth, right? And you can't, you can't get back that time with, you know, family and, you know, friends. And that really hit me, you know, and I, I think I've probably told hundreds of leaders face to face and, you know, now, you know, thousands who, you know, listen, it's such an important lesson that, you know, um, and I know you've had a couple of health scares over the last, you know, couple of years and, and, so, uh, and, and you're one of the healthiest human beings I know. And, 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 but you, 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 have, you have always stressed that to me that are you taking care of yourself? You know, are you, are you, are you, you know, making sure you're turning off the computer, right? Are you, are you engaging with your family? Are you being present, right? Just, so these, you know, principles that you're sharing are not just principles for actual principles, they're actual principles for life. Yes. Right. And and so so thank you for taking that time. You know, I it was a phone call, but I could almost hear you put your hand, you know, feel you put your hand on my shoulder when you said that, because you could you could sense the anxiety in me. So, you know, OK, like you're never going to get everything done on your to do list. Don't try. Like, stop worrying about it. <laughs> yeah. And there there's another way of thinking about it to another principle is. You know, it's easy to say no to something when you have a bigger yes burning inside. Mm. So when you're when you're getting asked to do this and do that by this group or that group or that person, you can say and if you say yes too much, then you've got way too many things. Yeah. So when you say no, thank you, uh, because you know you want you're going home to your family. You're yeah, not going. Time. that's right yeah it makes me think my uh mentor paul uh, martinelli he's always saying you know to me he said uh if you're overwhelmed that means you're underpurposed. <laughs> you know you don't have clarity in what you're supposed to be doing every day so so bud so i want to make sure you know folks can get the other seven principles so what's the easiest way can can they email you can they go to a web page what what do people I, need to do uh, to uh, get a copy email, of it? an email would be uh, okay yes. what and 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 do they use uh you know go ahead and tell them what your email is okay it is bud b-u-d-d -D, dot dingwall d-i-n-g-w-a-l-l -L -L, at gmail.com perfect yeah okay. so yep. bud yeah bud dot dingwall at gmail.com and we'll make sure we put it uh the link down there in the in the show notes as well. And I'll link some of your other social media pages. I think you're on LinkedIn and all sorts of fun stuff. So yeah. we'll make sure that we get that and reach out to Bud. And in the subject line, just put principles for principles, right? Or heard you yeah. on the podcast and and, uh, and and you can get a copy of these 10 and spend time with Bud, right? You you know, you do some, some mentoring with uh, principals and school leaders and you do yeah. consulting and, and all, um, you know, What's what's your favorite thing to do with uh, school leaders? Mentor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, walk I in do. the halls, right? Yeah, walk yeah. in the halls, and yeah. I think I think one of my gifts is in, is to be an encourager, to to listen and to encourage people 
to, to move forward and to not let things take them take them down. Yeah. And I'll tell you, everybody, there's nothing like getting just a random call or text from Bud Dingwall or or a video. He's 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 pretty sharp with his phone. You if you watch him, he's always gonna send a text message to like the voice to text. And sometimes he's you know, you know, you know, he's got a video in my and my son, I've already said, you know, uh, you know, Matthew's going to be 10 and uh, he's he loves sending Bud videos. He loves, loves yeah, that. that Bud. Video. <laughs> he, he is. He's a special young man. Uh, I, I well, thanks so much, Bud, for uh, giving us these these three of the 10. So I can't wait, you know, to hear, you know, the other ones I've, you know, I've, you know, spent a lot of time with you. And I think what's most important is that when you adapt something like, you know, Bud's uh, principles for principles or Maxwell's 21 laws. Or, I mean, whatever that, that framework is, right. You have to live it, <laughs> right. Yes. It's not, it's not just about reading it. Yeah. It's not about, you know, you know, knowing it it's, it's doing it. I mean, that is, that is the critical, critical part. It's the law of the picture where, you know, you know, people don't do it. People say they do what they see and uh, to live out these. So you clearly live out these these three that you share with us uh, today. And I know you live out the other seven. So reach out to Bud, email him, Bud, B-U-D-D at, or Bud.Dingwall at gmail.com or, uh, you know, click on the email that's that's in this, um, in this link right here uh, for our show notes and, you know, get a copy of, of the principles for, uh, and uh, set up a time to talk to Bud and uh, he can, he can mentor you through any challenge. I guarantee any challenge and make you feel good about yourself and everybody needs someone like bud in his life so thank thanks you. again bud appreciate you well, it's my pleasure and thank you very much I'm very humbled by your appreciation tom you're a, you're a first class educator and first class person i'm glad you're my friend thank you that makes me feel good all right bye-bye everybody